Transform your life in 15 minutes. Here's your host, Pia McAdams. I am smiling. Why? Because it's going to be a great day. Happy Monday and happy Presence Day to you. Today we're going to be talking about negative thinking. I know I'm smiling like you're smiling and talking about negative thinking. Well, yes. What do you want me to do? Frown? <laughs> no, I'm having a great day. Not because everything's going great, but you know what? It's a great day to be alive today and that's why it's going to be a great day. So today we're going to talk about negative thinking and negative thoughts because in this world today, everything is about being positive with the law of attraction and everything that you're hearing about, you know, talking about affirmations and it seems like negative thinking is not okay, but I'm here to share with you that negative thinking is okay and anytime that you have any feelings, it's okay. You don't want to suppress them. Why? Because it can have detrimental effects on your mental health and also your well-being. So if you think about it, let's think about some of the ways that negative thinking can actually help you. Well, number one, as I mentioned, anytime you suppress anything, it's going to have a detrimental effect on you. Well, what does that mean? Well, put it this way. If you were to take an orange and you were to squeeze it, right? What comes out of it 100% of the time? The orange juice. Well, same thing with you. If you were to squeeze you, what comes out of you? In other words, if you're just always thinking, you know, positive or, or trying to tell yourself positive things, positive things, positive things, and then you get squeezed, the first time something negative comes out of you, it's like, what? What's going on? Good morning, Felicia. Good to see you. All right. So it can have a detrimental effect because guess what? Just because you suppress it, just because you deny it or ignore it, doesn't mean it's not going to be in you. And guess what? When it comes to negative thinking, by having those negative thoughts, it actually is going to help you appreciate the positive ones. So think about how life is a series of highs and lows. If you're always on the high, you won't ever get to experience the low. So think of negative thoughts like that, like it actually helps you experience the positive ones. Because if you're always positive, then what does that mean? How would you know? But I guarantee you, even if you say you're positive, which by the way, is why affirmations don't typically work for a lot of people, is because you're saying one thing, but inside you're feeling something different. So negative thoughts is okay. One, again, because it's gonna let you experience the highs and the lows. Now the second point I wanna talk about when it comes to negative thoughts is that it kinda alerts you that there's a problem. Because if you're always nice and saying, you know, I'm a nice person, I'm doing this, but yet the first time you stub a toe or whatever, you have a bad morning and then you take it out on someone else, well then what happens to that? Like that alerts you to know that there's a problem. Okay, so negative thoughts are okay. It's okay to have negative thoughts. It's okay to be in a bad mood. I'm not saying stay there. I'm just saying be aware that it's okay. Don't suppress it. And then the third one is because it causes stress. Okay, and stress we know manifests in all kinds of problems with our life. I mentioned last week on my live that when it comes to like anger, when you're suppressing anger, guess what? You then start to have problems in your liver and something like sadness and grief can manifest into problems with your lungs. And so when you're having all these problems, these, these things is because of stress and a lot of it's because of negative thoughts. So all last week on my broadcast, I forgot to set my timer. <laughs> if I don't go over, probably have already. But no, um, last week I was talking about what happens when we have those trapped emotions. Well, when you try to suppress something, they become trapped in your body. And I guarantee you, again, once you get squeezed, it's going to come out. So make it, have those, those negative thoughts, like be aware of it. I'm not saying stay within your negative thoughts. Now, obviously there's a, there's a, a plant, there's a, a root to that negative thought. And so you need to get to that root, but it alerts you to know that there is a problem. So don't suppress those negative thoughts. Use them as a teaching tool. Now, I talked, talked about three different reasons why negative thoughts are going to be okay for you, but you know I don't want to leave you with that because, again, I want you to transmute those negative thoughts. Because I hear a lot of times where people say, you know, I'm a nice person, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And it got me to thinking, like, a lot of times if you just listen, I, I mentioned this as again last week, if you just listen to what you're saying, you're really talking to yourself and you're kind of reminding yourself what you need to do. So think about it. If you're a nice person, do you really need to constantly remind yourself that you're a nice person? In other words, you know, if you, if you find yourself saying, I'm nice, I'm nice, or I'm not this, I'm not that, if you think about it, that's actually letting you know what really is going on inside of you. So like, for instance, I don't walk around saying, um, you know, whatever, I can't even think of something right now, but I don't, whatever it is, if it's apparent to you, you don't have to walk around saying it. But if you're saying it, there's a reason why you're saying it, which is why I say, pay attention to what you're saying. So again, I don't want to leave you with, okay, it's okay to have negative thoughts, but what happens when you want to get rid of those? Because if you listen to me at all, 
when we're talking about transforming your life and you're going through that transformational process, this is a part of the transformation is accepting who you really are in all aspects of you. And guess what? There is a polarity. Negative and positive is on the polarity spectrum. And so you can't just think you're just have positivity all the time and not have negativity. But be aware of the negativity and then do something about it. Okay, so that's why I want to leave you with two real quick things, two ways that you can actually transmute those negative thoughts. In other words, get to the root of the problem. And I guarantee the root of the problem is deep seated within your subconscious mind. But I'm not going to go into that because I've done that already enough, at least at this time. All right. So number one, my favorite way when I have a bad day. Oh, hi, Karen. How's it going? Good morning. Oh, my light just went off anyway. So one of my favorite things when I'm having, let's say, a bad day or a, fat, a bad feeling um, or bad situation that I want to transmute and get rid of or find the root of the problem is um, what I do is after I take my deep, three deep breaths, because remember, that helps me to center myself when I do that. So whenever you hear me say take three deep breaths, what I'm doing is getting yourself centered and in, into this present moment. OK, so in other words, you're blocking out everything else. Once to do that, I like to put my hands on my heart. OK, my hands on my heart, because what I'm doing here is I'm actually going to send love out to the situation and love to myself for forgiving myself for having those negative feelings and those negative thoughts. All right. So once I put my hand on my heart, I then close my eyes and then I think about the situation. OK, like, for instance, whatever it may be, like if I was rude to a person today, I'm like, you know what? You know, first, I apologize energetically to the person and to the situation, to myself as well. And then I forgive myself and then I ask the person for forgiveness as well. And then I start thinking, I ask myself the question, like, what is the root of that problem? Like, why did I, why did I react that way? And then I'm just quiet and I just let the thoughts come to me. And it, I guarantee you, if you do this enough, it will. Like the first couple of times, if you're still stressed and you're not, you know, not believing in this, it's not going to work. But it, I guarantee you 100% of the time, if, you're, if your intentions are pure, it will work for you. So think about the situation, then ask yourself why you reacted that way. And then there's some other things that I go on as well, but I'm not going to go into that right now because, again, my time is running down. But that's one of the ways. And then once I do that, again, I always end with, you know, thanking myself for um, bringing that to my attention. And then I do better next time. And I guarantee you, by being aware of the times that you're having those negative thoughts, you're going to find that all of a sudden you're transmuting those negative thoughts because you won't react to them. You'll just be aware of them. And by the way, you know, I love and I'm always advocating about meditation. And that's another reason why people have trouble uh, meditating is because of these thoughts that are going. And they don't necessarily have to be negative, but just thoughts are all over. I guarantee you, most of them are negative. But anyway, thoughts are always going on, always going on. And if you just kind of take the time and understand that they're going to be there, that's the part of being alive is having thoughts. They're going to be negative and positive thoughts. When it comes to meditation, I know if I'm like, why are you talking about meditation? Because that's a part of it. It's part of your transmuting is meditating. But what happens is when you're meditating, you're not getting rid of your thoughts. They're not going nowhere. All you're doing is you're putting those thoughts on the background. So on the forefront, your mind, your forefront of your mind is clear so that you can receive answers. So when I'm saying put my hand on my heart center, if you're constantly like thinking about the situation, then obviously it's, it, nothing can come to you because you're full. You got to be empty. So that means, and again, when I'm saying empty, the thoughts are going to be there. It's just that you're like, you're quiet in your mind, center yourself. You have to take more than three deep breaths, then take more than three deep breaths. Or if the thoughts, if you still find yourself thinking about those negative thoughts, maybe now is not the time to transmute it. But allow yourself to have the thoughts that come. They're okay. Do not suppress them. And okay, and I'll tell you the next one as I'm trans uh furring myself. I said that. Yeah, I am transferring myself. As I'm moving on, transitioning is more or as I'm transitioning myself to um, the next part. So the other um, other way that I like to transmute those negative thoughts, let me turn off this light here because otherwise, sorry, that's gonna bug me, the noise that it's making. Sorry I'm in the dark, but I'm moving, I'm moving right along. The second way that I like to transmute those negative thoughts is by journaling. Okay, so in other words, again, deep breaths. And I like to put myself in a mood. So, you know, I might light a candle, light incense, and then I journal. And I'll have like a journal prompt that I'll write, like, you know, what's going on with you? Like, why are you feeling? Why are you having these thoughts? All right, so those are two ways that you can actually transmute those, those negative thoughts, by connection and then by, um, by journaling. All right, so hopefully this was helpful to you. Again, any feelings that you have, it is okay. Do not suppress them, okay? Because they're inside of you, okay? If they're coming out, 
If anger is coming out, if rudeness is coming out, if sadness is coming out, it is within you. And you don't want to suppress it. Uh, what is, okay, remember I don't have my glasses on, so I got to kind of squint. Uh, oh, okay, so Karen saying journaling is helpful. Absolutely, guys. And honestly, I mean, I, you know, it's one of those things I carry with me. And if I don't have my journal, you know what I do do? I have my phone. Okay, so in other words, the notepads, and a lot of times if I don't have a journal with me, which I usually always have a journal with me, or at least something, but I use my phone as well. And again, just getting it out will definitely help you. All right, so now we go on to the second part of the broadcast where we actually, I had it stored up, but now it's gone. But we go to um, the yoga. And this is, remember in this broadcast, I'm doing five minute exercises, one for the mind, one for the body, and one for the soul. When it comes to this portion right here, this is where I want you to interact with me. I know some of you are like, well, I can't right now. Well, whenever you can. And there's going to be like five-minute um, yoga routine, mind, body, soul. Okay, and I'm saying they're three separate, but they're not. They're actually together. Good morning, Alma. Nice to see you. You're just in time to get ready to meet me on the mat. All right. So let's go ahead and see. It's Monday morning. I used to like to start in a standing position. So let's go ahead and start in um, Tadasana. And let's go to let's go to the front of the mat. I need to start at the back. Let's go to the front of the mat. Meet me on the mat in Tadasana, and I will explain that in just a moment. Sure that my my knees are directly underneath my hips. 
Now, as you inhale, I want you to lift your head and your chest. Tailbone is up in the back of the room, arch your back. And as you exhale, drop your chin down to your chest and round the spine. Again, inhale. And exhale. One more time, nice and breath, inhaling. This time as you exhale, go ahead and curl the toes under and take it down with facing dog. Now we're going to try to get your heels down if you can, but again, if you can't, it's okay. Now come up with your fingertips. I want you to walk your hands back to your toes, and I want you to forward fold into a rag doll. Now in this position right here, I want you to take your hands and I want you to clasp the outer part of your elbows. Now, we're like the crown of your head, pull your body weight naturally forward. Now, for some of you, you may be up here, depending on your flexibility, that's okay. When you're inhaling, just kind of hold your position. And as you exhale, I want you to release and relax and let go. Draw your breath into the tight areas of your body. I want you to have soft knees. Lift the kneecaps to engage your quadriceps. Get a little deeper stretch in those hamstrings. And again, like the crown of your head, pull your body weight naturally forward. Don't resist. Release. Just hold that here. Just deep breaths. Inhale into your nose. Exhale into your mouth. Remember, when it comes to yoga, it's not about the, quant the quantity of how many poses. It's the quality in the poses. Using your breath. All right, go ahead and release your fingertips down to the mat if you can, your palms. Now walk your toes out, your feet out towards the edge of the mat, so that your toes are facing to the corner. Then I want you to slowly bring your tailbone down toward the mat. Now if you keep your feet flat, that's great. If not, that's okay. A lot of times if you spread out your feet a little further, a little wider, it'll get them flat down. Now using your elbows, I want you to push out on those inner thighs, or those, yeah, and then bring your palms together to the heart center. This is Velocity right here. And this is the hip opener. We spend a lot of our time seated, and so our hip flexors become shortened. So this is a pose right here. And again, as you're breathing, as I'm exhaling, I'm actually directing my breath into the tight areas of the body, which is the knee and hip flexors. Now go ahead and place the palm down, right palm down. Left arm opens up, up toward the ceiling. Now my place is on my thumbs. If there's too much strain and stress on your neck, feel free to look forward or to look down. You can also bind as an option. And again, if you want to bind, but you're not able to clasp your hands, you can actually get a, a strap or even something like a household item, like a sock that will actually help you. All right, go ahead and release. Bring the palms back to the heart center, push them out on the inner thighs. Then the opposite arm goes down, opposite arm goes up. Again, if it's too much strain or stress, feel free to look forward or look down. Or you have the option to bind. And then go ahead and release. Bring the palms back to the heart center. Now go ahead and place your palms down. Bring your knees down toward the mat. Cross your legs right over the left, go over the right. Bring your body into a nice, comfortable seated position, facing forward. Making sure that you're on your sits bones and not the fleshy part of your body. Sitting up nice and tall, fingertips out to the side. Just draw your breath in. And then exhale, release the fingertips down to the mat. Take your time, use the full breath. Again, take a nice deep breath, inhale through your nose. And exhale. One more time, take a nice deep breath, bringing in all of that positive energy. Once you get your palms together at the very top, and as you exhale, bring the hands down to the heart center. And we say, Namaste. All right, thank you for practicing yoga with me. This brings us to the third and final segment of the broadcast. When I want to lead you through a guided meditation. 
All right, so I want you to come into a nice, comfortable seated position. And by the way, I mean, you shouldn't be driving. Today's President's Day, but some people do have to work. So if you are driving, please do not listen to this. Um, if you are, because it's early, laying down, then ask that you sit up. It's not that you have to be in any position when you're meditating, it's just that when you're laying down, typically speaking, when your body becomes relaxed, you will go to sleep. Now, obviously, you just woke up, but that doesn't mean anything. You can go to sleep. So come into a nice, comfortable seated position. And if you're sitting in a chair, take your shoes off and just kind of let your feet interact with Mother Earth. Just on the floor, just get yourself nice and grounded. Okay. Now again, let's go ahead and center ourselves into this space, this meditative space. So I want you to take three deep breaths. Go ahead and inhale through your nose. And exhale through your mouth. Again, nice deep breath, inhaling through your nose. And exhaling through your mouth. One more time, deep breath, inhaling through your nose. And this time as you exhale, I want you to go ahead and close your eyes. And let, let the natural rhythm of your breath flow in and out of your body. Now I want you to imagine, if you will, that there is a light, divine light, working about three feet above you, above your head. And that light is asking for permission to enter into your space. I want you to mentally Give it permission by just saying the word yes. Now imagine that light entering through the crown of your head and just working its way through your body, just clearing all the stresses, the strains, the anxiousness, anything, worry, that's no longer serving you and is washing it away. Breathe into this light as it makes its way through your body, down to your neck, just washing over your shoulders, just relieving any tension that you may have as your shoulders drop down, release. Imagine the light going down your arms to the elbows, in and out through your fingertips. Now imagine the light coming from the front of your chest, also to the back, clearing, clearing any strains, stress, worries, anything that's no longer serving you, giving it to the light. So it makes its way down to the middle back, your abs, your low back, and your waist. Now imagine it's like coming from your waist, down your legs, to your knees, and then continue flowing down to your ankles, in and out through your toes. Now the light is going from the bottom of your feet all the way down through the earth as it connects to the center of the earth. And just like a trampoline, it then pushes all the way back up through your feet, through your ankles, through your knees, your waist, all the way up so that you're connected from above and below. Breathe into this new space, this divine connection. Now imagine that light coming out through your heart center, 
and just surround you around yourself about three feet. Making a bubble, encapsulating your whole body. Now imagine this light filling the room that you're in. In the building. Now the light is expanding across the city that you're in. the state, the country, the continent, and the whole world. You're fully connected to all divine source. Breathe into this space. Invite the connection. To bring your consciousness back, we're going to take three deep breaths. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. One more time, nice deep breath, inhale through the nose. This time as you exhale, go ahead and open up your eyes as you return, release, relax, refreshed, and calm. You've done something good for yourself today. Again, I like to do that meditation. It's called my ABC, Always Be Connected Meditation. At any time today or any time in your life you're feeling stressed, just take a little a quick moment just to do that meditation. And it gives you, again, you release all your strains, your stress, your worries, anything that's no longer serving you, just give it to divine source and he will take care of it for you. All right, I want to thank you again for watching this podcast. Guys, share this information with your family and friends because guess what? Sharing is caring. And as I mentioned today, any feelings that you have is okay. Don't suppress them. Release them and transmute them into something positive. All right. See you again tomorrow, same time. Have a great day. I'm still smiling. <laughs> Bye.